Hello! Today I'm going to talk about amplifier classes. Previously we talked about small signal amplifiers, and I'll just draw that real quickly. We had an NPN transistor, and the finished amplifier had a number of resistors on the collector and the emitter. I'll go the full Monty here and show the bypass capacitor, plus we have biasing resistors on the base. and a coupling capacitor to an input to the amplifier, and then another coupling capacitor on the output. And I explained the purpose of all of these resistors and capacitors in the video on small signal amplifiers. So the signal coming in, we just look at it as a sine wave. Of course, it's going to be much more complex in practical use, but we just look at a sine wave. If we were testing this, we would use a one kilohertz sine wave because that's mathematically about in the middle of the range of our hearing. And so we would have our input as a sine wave. This has a property that it actually inverts the wave. So the output is going to be 180 degrees out of phase and amplified. And we also talked about that we can't allow that to go below zero volts because then it will chop off the bottom. And whatever voltage this is, let's say it's being powered by 12 volts. We can't let that go above that because then it will chop off the top and we get what's called clipping distortion. And if we have that clipping distortion, that means we're losing part of our wave. And this particular amplifier is going to amplify all 360 degrees of this sine wave. Nothing clipped off, nothing shortened. So this is going to be amplifying a full 360 degrees of our sine wave. And we call this a class a amplifier. So by definition, a class A amplifier will amplify all 360 degrees of the sine wave. Now, why would we want to amplify anything less? We'll talk about that in a moment, but let's look at a problem with this amplifier. Let's say we want to have a 100 watt output. So the RMS value of the power being dissipated by this. Let me get this out of the way so I can draw the rest of the amplifier. So that's going to go through a load and we want that load to dissipate 100 watts and let's not worry about the current or the resistance at this point. We just know it's going to be dissipating 100 watts. So if we have an input, that's our maximum input. If we put an input that's any higher than this voltage or that voltage, we're going to clip and we're going to go above 12 volts or below zero volts in the output. So our absolute maximum giving us our full 100 watts on our output. That's great. But are we going to always be amplifying a large signal to a much larger signal? If we're doing music or stage performance or lecture or whatever, people are going to be talking and sometimes they're loud, sometimes they're soft. Especially if we're doing classical music, that gets loud and that gets soft. So sometimes we're not going to be amplifying something quite so big. So our input is smaller and our output, except that's going to be inverted and our output is smaller. Great, except there is our average power, which is 100 watts. So it's going up to a higher power and a lower power, higher power and lower power. And so when we are amplifying the full signal, that's okay. We're going up to a higher power and a lower power, averaging 100 watts. Everything is happy. Now we're going up to half a watt, down to minus half a watt, well, whatever. But we're still averaging 100 watts. So this is producing 100 watts of power through our load 100% of the time, whether we're amplifying a small signal or a big signal. And that's not very efficient. Now, there are some people that think that there are disadvantages to solutions to this problem with other classes of amplifier and think that this is the way to go. You must have class A amplifiers. I haven't heard that in quite a while, but I remember back in the 1970s, I went into a really, really high end stereo store. I mean, this is when a good stereo would cost you $1,000. You walk into this place and they start at $10,000. So this is the highest end stuff that you would not see anywhere else. 
and one place they had their Class A amplifier. And that amplifier had two heat sinks that were this big because it was a stereo amplifier. So a big heat sink here and a big heat sink there just to get rid of the heat from the huge ganged transistors. So there's multiple transistors here and multiple transistors there. So it's not just one transistor, but it's a bunch of these in parallel to produce the power. Then those huge heat sinks to get rid of the heat. So class A amplifier is great for small signal amplifiers where we don't have a lot of power, but when we want to produce power, we need a different class of amplifier. And I'll talk about power amplifiers in a, another lecture, but let's talk about amplifier classes to work our way to that. So this is a class A amplifier. And to change that, all we need to do basically is change the way these resistors bias the main transistor. And it might become even simpler. We'll probably get rid of that one because we're talking about a simpler type of amplifier. So let's get rid of several things we don't need anymore. Pretty much everything. So let's make this amplifier have the load in the collector. So this is going to go to ground. This just makes it easier to explain. And I'm going to get rid of that capacitor too. So now we just have a little bit of bias in here just to bring this up to about 7 tenths of a volt to start conducting. And I guess we will put a capacitor here to block that DC. So now when we have the AC coming in, looks like that, well this goes above zero, there's our zero volts, that's going to go above zero and that's going to go below zero. And of course this ground is zero volts. So this voltage here is about seven tenths of a volt. And when this goes higher, it's going to push that higher and that's going to conduct. But what happens when this goes below zero volts? It's going to simply try to reverse bias that transistor and it's not going to do anything. So this only amplifies when this goes positive, it's amplifying, now it's just doing nothing. Amplifying and doing nothing. So what's the output going to do? Let's go ahead and just look at the voltage here. Let's say that this is plus 12 volts. So this is going to be at 12 volts when that's at zero, and it's going to go down and back up to 12. Is it going to be able to go above 12 and make a complete sine wave? Nope. And also it can't amplify that anyway, so it's just going to amplify the top half and we will have a output that looks something like that. So we have a 360 degrees at the input, but only 180 degrees are actually being amplified. So 180 degrees, nada. 180 degrees, nada. So it's only amplifying half of that input or 180 degrees, and this is called a class B amplifier. And when we get into power amplifiers, we'll see how we can gang two of these together and get the same result as a class A amplifier with some minor problems. Like I said here, we have to bias this to bring that up to about 7 tenths of a volt so that it starts conducting immediately when this comes above zero, and there's going to be some distortion there, so it's not going to be perfect. So get a little bit of distortion at these points here, but it's close. So that's going to be a class B amplifier. So by definition, a class B amplifier is going to amplify 180 degrees of our signal. So there's a class A amplifier and a class B amplifier. Is there a class C amplifier? Yes, there is. And what's the difference? Basically, right there. A class C amplifier is going to be biased such that, well, if we left this resistor out entirely, we would end up with a type of class C amplifier because now with no bias on the base of this transistor, it's not going to actually start conducting until this pushes the input above 0 0.7 volts. So it's not going to start conducting until it gets up to about here and then back over here about there. So it's actually doing less than 180 degrees and less than 180 degrees so we can Going to take that down there. And so it looks pretty much the same at this point, but it's not quite doing 180 degrees. So by definition, that would be a class C amplifier. Now where I see class A amplifiers most often is in radio circuits where we have a tuned circuit where we're only going to amplify one frequency. 
So we don't need to have the full input, we just need just a little bit to get the thing to turn on and we're going to get an output that looks like just the tip of this being amplified. So we're going to be off, 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 and then off, off, off. It still looks kind of the same, but notice the distance between there because I'm really only amplifying the tip of that sine wave. So much less than 180 degrees. And if this is going into a tuned circuit, well, that's all that matters because we're only going to amplify one frequency because this is a radio transmitter. And so we can actually get some efficiency by using a class C amplifier. Back to our definitions. We have our sine wave that's being amplified. Of course, in the real world, it's a little more complex, but this is just to give an example. That sine wave has 360 degrees total in its one cycle. And if we amplify all 360 degrees, we have a class A amplifier. If we amplify just half of it, we have a class B amplifier. If we amplify just a tiny bit of it, or anything less than 180 degrees, we have a class C amplifier. So there's our three main classes of amplifier. There's one more which you may have thought, well, wait a second, what if I have a class A and I'm amplifying more than 180 degrees, like I'm amplifying from here to there, and there to there. So it's greater than 180 degrees, but less than 360 degrees. Well, the name for that is a class A, B. Sometimes you may or may not see the hyphen in there. So class A is 360 degrees. If we are less than 360 degrees, but more than 180, that's a class AB. If we amplify 180 degrees, that's a class B. Less than 180 degrees, a class C. Now you may occasionally hear of a class D amplifier. I don't think it really belongs in this classification, but since you may hear about it, I'll mention it. And to understand that, you probably want to watch my video on switching regulators because that's basically what they are. It's a switching regulator as an amplifier. So the output, let's put a transistor here for our output. And let's put that, let's see, I'm going to put a transformer. Or I'll just, just put the speaker right there in the collector. And so we have a signal coming into our final transistor. And the power is going up, the power is going down, powering the speaker. A class D amplifier is going to send a very high frequency. Let's get the speaker out of the way here. A high frequency square wave in there. And it's going to pulse width modulate it. In other words, instead of the voltage going up and the voltage going down, there's going to be a circuit that causes the duty cycle. So in other words, sometimes it'll conduct a long time. The Here's my pulses, they're on a long time, they're on a, off a short time. So that's going to be like up here as we go up in voltage, we get longer pulses. As we go down in voltage, we get something like a 50% duty cycle. And as we go lower, we get a lower duty cycle or shorter duty cycle. So here's in the middle, we get on and off about the same amount of time. If we go up in voltage, we're on longer and off shorter. If we go down in voltage, we're on shorter and off longer. And that then goes through a filter and finally to our speaker. Now, I've never really taken a close look at one of these, so I'm not giving a really perfect representation, but this is the idea. This filter here takes those square waves and filters them out into basically DC, but that DC is going up and that DC is going down, and that DC is going up, and it means it's really AC. And this is happening at, I don't know what's a good frequency, 100 kilohertz comes to the top of my head because that would be well above our hearing frequency. So this is happening at 100 kilohertz. So once it's filtered out, this wave here can go anywhere from 20 hertz to 20 
kilohertz and the artifacting caused by the fact that this is really turning on and off really quickly and then being filtered is going to be very minimal. In fact, you won't be able to hear it. And so what we have is a transistor that's switching on and off and on and off, which means when it's on, it has a lot of current, but no voltage across it. The power it dissipates is going to be equal to the voltage times the current. If we have lots of current and no voltage, no power. So it's not dissipating much power. And the other part of the cycle, it is turned off. And so it's got no current, lots of voltage across it, but no current. Big voltage times no current is no power. So this is dissipating almost no power in that case. So that would be a class D amplifier. And don't know where I've seen them. I just know I've heard about them and know how they work. And they also say class D equals digital because it switches on and off like a computer. Yeah, well, you could call it digital, but the output is eventually, you know, you're taking an analog input, running it through a switching amplifier, and then turning that back into an analog output. And so is it digital? Yeah, it's arguable, but that is what a class D amplifier is. So if you found this useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that gray bell when you do so you get notified when I put up new videos. To learn electronics technology and perhaps become a certified electronics technician, or just get a jump start in your studies in electrical engineering, you can go to vocademy.net and take my free course. A big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I couldn't do this without you. To help me put these videos up and keep Vocademy free, you can go to patreon.com slash vocademy and pledge your support or look in the description below for a link to make one-time donations. Again, a big thank you to my patrons and thanks to everyone for watching.